out into the country away from the city is always a treat. After a great night's sleep and a good breakfast, I'm ready to see what the quaint town of Grayton has to offer. Turn off the N2 at Caledon. Head northeast and you find Grayton in this valley at the foot of the Rafir Sonar Ent Mountains. The first thing to do is park your car and with these excellent retro bikes for hire, you shouldn't need four wheels again until you leave. While there are 150 kilometers of mountain biking trails around the town, Jade chose to cycle the oak lined streets within this Victorian hamlet with Lisa Mulligan. I'm so excited to be exploring the village by bicycle. Apart from the obvious beauty, what makes Grayton so alluring? The beautiful mountains that surround us, the mountain biking, the horses walk freely around the village, the bird life is magnificent, and the beautiful homes around us, the quiet lanes, the oak trees. This is so appealing because it's close to Cape Town and people come here for weekends in winter, summer, spring, autumn, their mountain biking events, their um, classic musical events, their art walks, there's the Rose Festival, we've got it all here. One famous citizen, David Geyers, took the scenic route to Grayton and to becoming an artist. In the 80s, he was a songwriter. The year he arrived at Tech, they discontinued fine art, so he pursued a commercial career in graphic design and creating lines of greeting cards. 20 years ago, he became a full-time and now much respected artist. David, your work is so fun and colourful. How would you describe your style? Well, I actually studied as a graphic designer, so I'm more of an illustrator than a fine artist. I would say it's a mixture between uh, pop art and cartoons. You know, I love Andy Warhol and Keith Haring and that type of stuff, and then also cartoons like Calvin and Hobbes. You started your career as a designer and illustrator. What made you switch to painting? Oh, that's actually quite easy, so, so I can get all those people off my back. You know, it's such a cutting throat industry, the, the advertising industry, that it, it was just so nice to be my own boss and be out there and do my own thing. That David produces pop art instead of landscapes of the surrounding mountains is typical of what makes Grayton such a fascinating town. His work can be both upbeat and more inward looking. It's a little bit more grungy, I would say. It's not as popular as the others, but uh, I like to limit the palette a little bit. You can see there's fewer colors in there, and there's a little bit of stuff in there that's not your run of the mill. That's the type of thing that I really like doing. Married with three children, David's success allows him to live off the beaten track while selling internationally through city and online galleries. I used to drive for hours to take my kids to school when I was living in Cape Town. Now it, it, it's a question of five minutes if there's a donkey in the road or a horse in the road, literally, uh, which is quite nice because I don't even mind that. Uh, so the peace and quiet is just fantastic. And I also like the fact that this town has got its old character still. And a lot of the old houses are still intact, so it's got almost a European feel, which I, which I really enjoy. Jade was fast coming round to the Grayton state of mind. And someone who makes that incredibly tempting is the man who gave his name to Van Gieser Handmade Belgian Chocolates, a brand renowned for traditional and groundbreaking flavors. Richard! <laughs> Grayton's own Willy Wonka. <laughs> Come through. How does it feel to have a vocation that makes everyone so happy? It's really fabulous because in my previous job I was an accountant and balance sheet never brought anybody any happiness. But any chocolate just brings smiles to everybody's faces. So it's wonderful. What is the first step to making the perfect chocolate? The first step is to start with the perfect ingredients. So I import fine curvatures, as they call it, with good cocoa butter, and I have good nuts, I have good fillings, so it's the material. Then the next thing is the environment, the equipment and the temperature. A spirit of innovation sees Richard always trying new tastes and shapes, and he recently created chocolate pairings with a world-famous winemaker. All right, less talking and more creating, so we can get to the part where we eat. Okay, Jade, we're gonna do simple bunnies. You're just going to fill the mould with chocolate and then it's got to go into every nook and cranny. Then we need to turn on the vibrating machine to remove the bubbles from the chocolate. And there you can see them emerging. And can you scrape off the excess chocolate for me? Sure, I'd love to have the honours. 
Working in here is sweet torment for chocolate lovers. The air is full of flavors from cafe latte and creme brulee to masala chai, toffee crunch, and salted caramel. Hi, oh, Richard, you have too much faith in me. I will try my best. Okay, one, two. Oh, I only lost one bunny ear. Oh, that's normal, that's normal. <laughs> Mmm, that's delicious, Richard. Mmm, so good. Chocolate makes great fuel on a walk up the Busmanskloof Trail. Centuries ago, these forested ravines were home to the Hasakas Khoikhoi tribe. And Colette Kemp showed us how these surrounds are a walk back through natural history. Colette, what are some of the things that make this forest so unique? What I am amazed by is that it's originally a tropical rainforest system. Um, if it's large enough, then it can actually create its own microclimate and impact on the environment around it. It's completely self-sufficient, so if its forest margins are closed and if the canopy is closed, it maintains its own temperature and its humidity. And you'll notice that when we, when we approach the forest, it's actually cool. Before you even get into the forest, the temperature is cooler. This Afro-Montane forest with yellow wood and Cape Holly trees is like walking into a scene from The Lord of the Rings. A special feature of the trees are their extensive roots, which make for a resilient ecosystem. Cape Town is experiencing one of the worst droughts in a hundred years, but here it looks so lush. You know, most of the trees in this forest are actually riparian trees, riverine forest trees, and um, they have specialized root systems that actually are called water-holding vegetation. So uh, when they sweat, they've got the ability to draw on the underground water system, and it's just maintaining its little microclimate here. As you can see, it's, everything is thriving. It's a drought shadow. It's great to be out here. It feels so tranquil. It's a really peaceful, really, really cool environment. You really feel nature. You notice when children come into a forest, they take on the persona of a tiger or the lion, you know, they're really affected by the atmosphere. And I mean, all these trees, you kind of feel their, their energy, I think. It's a place that you can come for peace, you know. If hiking or hiring a mountain bike is not your scene, then a horse ride with Robin Hoffmeyer is another popular way to see the countryside. Robin, why would you encourage others to come and horse ride when they're in Greaton? It's a good way of seeing the beauty of the countryside and quite frankly, it's just good for the soul to be with these amazing creatures. Is it a huge part of the community? It's a special part of Greaton. The two go very well together, Greaton and horses. A lot of wild horses in the roads in Greaton, so people are very comfortable around horses. When did your love for horses begin? As a small child, I was taken aback at how these powerful creatures have such a gentle and generous soul that they let us ride them. And that just got stronger and stronger and never wore off. Within minutes, you can go from watering your horse and swimming in a river to taking coffee at a local roastery, or from mountain biking the ravines to fine dining or vegetarian fare on Main Street. It is a world in a little country town and not to be missed.